didn't necessarily go out. So we're just going to kind of rehash uh, yeah. the temperatures. It's yeah. been hot. Uh, a lot of those days in red showing above average temperatures. Yeah. Let's and take that a full. Couple so of records. If you didn't hear it, all right, here's the deal. All right, we're looking back, uh, and we're going to talk about where we're going from here, but we're looking back at temperatures over the last 30 days. Where you see them in the dark blue, that's exactly where you're supposed to be. Where you see the light blue, it's actually cooler than normal. And what, there were maybe four days. Every other day that you see in red is above normal. And so typically around here, when you know we talk about 90s, uh, we talk about eh, 91, 92, 93. Uh, we have a lot more days normally like that than we do 98, 99, 100. Uh, that changed this year, though. We've had so many days now in the mid to upper 90s, even the century mark, and uh, several records, Eric, uh, that 101 back on Friday the 5th and you know, right after 4th of July, and then 99 on that Saturday tied a record. So it was a little unusual. And on top of that, of course, the humidity level pushed the heat index values up 105, if not greater, in some neighborhoods. Yep, and uh, we'll kind of just loop you in on the rainfall or lack thereof, yep. and this is what we were talking about. Not a whole lot. Yeah. Um, the 16th and 17th, the last couple of days, scattered thunderstorms across the area. Some people picking up some big time rain, inch, yep. inch and a half. Yep. Um, other areas not picking up anything, and that's yep. the nature of scattered thunderstorms yeah. in the summertime forecast. So. Yeah. And it's difficult because we know I hear a lot of it on Twitter and Facebook. Hey, I need rain at my house. You know, jokingly, please dial up some rain for, you know, one, two, three Elm Street and Gamewell or, you know, sawmills or somewhere. It doesn't work that way. You know that. And I know they're only joking. But the point is that we need rain. Everybody needs the rain. And some neighborhoods will get, as you said, an inch and a half, two inches of rain, maybe in an hour's time. And then others, you know, it's four or five drops. And that's about it. Yep. And uh, now we're going to talk about the pattern changing. And uh, this is what we're currently seeing. We're going to take this full. Yeah, so, this is uh, important. A lot going on here. So you see the oranges, reds, yellows uh, as you head up into Canada and then down toward Texas in the Four Corners region. But see that blue streak from Toronto uh, up toward Quebec and off toward Newfoundland. That is the jet stream. And I kind of highlighted that with the arrows as well. And that is why we're seeing our weather changing as we go through the next couple of days that dip in the jet stream is going to move a little bit further south and that's going to bring some changes to our forecast we're going to see temperatures not as hot we're going to see a lot more cloud cover we're going to see rain chances we got an area of high pressure off into the atlantic that's helping push in a bunch of moisture we got the jet stream that's pushing in a cold front and that's going to be the trigger so we talked about this a little bit yesterday and those are you know a couple things that we need moisture lift instability those yeah. are the three things that For you rain. need yeah. to get rain and thunderstorms in the area and we're going to see that just based on this pattern changing and we're not going to see it change a whole lot as we go through the next week or so mm -hmm. in advance, you can see that jet stream still affecting us with that big ridge of high pressure out west. Yeah, and typically the jet stream is much farther north uh, this time of the year, right along, you know, generally speaking, the U.S. Canadian border. And so we're so far removed from it that you can hardly it's very difficult for a front to get in here in July. With, by the time they get here, they're washed out and you know, there's no real cool air. That's a very, very rare event here. Uh, but they can get close and they can stall and that can be the conveyor belt. Whenever you have any sort of dissimilar air mass, if that's lining up near you and then you throw in Gulf and Atlantic moisture, you throw in mountains and elevation, you put all those together, you can really create you know, quite a bit of rain. But typically, you know in this time of the year, in this part of the country, it's the Bermuda High, that's at the surface, but also there's usually an Atlantic ridge out there and you're showing that and then the big ridge is out west. So everything is sort of shifting a little bit. And with that jet stream dipping ever so slightly closer to us, that's the kicker. That's what oftentimes we talk about. Oh, there's a lot of humidity. Yeah, well, then why isn't it raining every day? Well, there's no trigger for it. You just everything you just pointed out is the active trigger that'll take us through today, tomorrow and through the weekend and into next week for elevated rain chances. Yeah, and you talk about those fronts coming in that wash out and uh, just to go into a little bit more detail, a front is essentially the difference between cold air and hot air mm -hmm. and cold and dry, mm -hmm. hot and humid yep. and that boundary. We talk about boundaries. Boundaries are so important in the world of meteorology because it acts as that trigger, that lifting mechanism mm -hmm. in order to spark those showers and thunderstorms and some significant rainfall can happen when there's that big difference between hot and humid and drier and not as hot. Yeah, we call those baroclinic zones, uh, which is just a fancy term for dissimilar air masses and where they line up. And sometimes if they do push 
through the Gulf or at least into the Gulf or the Atlantic and then they sit there and stall for a couple of days, you can get low pressure to develop on that. And oftentimes early and late in the season, you'll see tropical storms develop on those because uh, a front this time of the year that is hanging along the Gulf Coast, that's never a good thing. You don't want that to happen. In our case though, this front is going to get in here, stall and eventually sort of just wash out where we won't really notice any difference between one side of it or the other. But there's be just enough subtle differences there that it will help to trigger showers and thunderstorms fairly plentiful we think uh, going into uh, the next few days so, yep. so this, this is, is a big deal because we we went you know weeks and weeks and weeks without any rain and now all of a sudden it's like every day we have oh yeah, a good chance for some rain now it says thursday at four o'clock there in the banner that's a week from today so mm. uh you can see things really not changing that ridge of high pressure out west still locked in place there in that big dip in the jet stream uh, still in place. So what does that mean for us as we go through the next week or so, really even into the next two weeks, mm -hmm. so all the way through the end of July into August 1st, uh, you can see that area of below average temperatures. Now, not necessarily due to just the jet stream, but we get more cloud cover, we get more rain chances, and that helps keep those afternoon temperatures down. And that's really what we're gonna be seeing happen over the Southeast, potentially, through the extent of the summer. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's exactly, you took the point uh, I was going to make is that, all right, the heart of this cool air is gonna be centered over the Arklatex, Arkansas, Louisiana, East Texas there, okay. And it's really below average all the way through the Midwest and into the Western Carolinas. We're close to average. So now upper 80s to about 90, you would think, you know, that's our normal high temperature. So we'll be, you know, close to that, a little bit below average, and you'll see that in the next seven days. But you think about it, you made a point. This runs through the 1st of August. By the 15th of August, very noticeably, the nights start to get longer. Kids are going back to school. Is it still hot? Absolutely. Can it be hot here in September and October? 100% it could be hot. But definitely, you see the average temperatures start to come down. The nights get a little bit longer. The seasonal thunderstorms start to back down a little bit, and we start to look at tropical systems. And tropical systems, again, are much bigger, much wide, much more widespread, impactful, synoptically scaled systems that throw lots of clouds across the area. And you get that for four or five, six days, you're definitely gonna be cooler than average. So in a lot of ways, we're sort of suggesting that unless we can get some sort of a big ridge to reestablish itself in August or September in the Southeast, effectively the summer, the worst of the summer heat is probably over with. Uh, again, there will be some fluctuations here, but we're looking at the big scale. Yep, so we talked about below average temperatures. We're talking about above average precip that leads us into that point uh, mm -hmm. that we were talking about. Uh, another thing that comes with a lot of precip, wet ground right. uh, increases the humidity levels across the area moist air is harder to heat up and cool down the dry air. So as we get into those longer nights and shorter days, uh, it's harder to get those temperatures to warm up into the upper 90s, into the triple digits. And so, uh, yeah, uh, you know, as we head toward the middle of August, we'll see that daylight really start to decrease and uh, probably, you know, going to be really tough to get into the upper 90s and triple digits, especially if we see this ring true with the above average precip. Two points I'd make on that map right there. Okay, number one, just to dovetail on what you just said, uh, I can remember 2019, we were 100 degrees in October. It didn't rain from the middle part of August through the middle part of October. I mean, a quarter of an inch of rain in two solid months. So when the ground was dry, as you said, it heats up officially, cooled off at night, but it heated up very efficiently during the day. The sun's still strong, so we were getting 90s and 100 degree readings in October and September, and it was crazy. But when you throw wet ground, the atmosphere's gotta overwork that to heat up. It's already trying to evaporate that moisture. And so it's got to work harder and harder. And at the same time, the sun is getting weaker and weaker by the day. And these days are getting longer and longer. It becomes much more difficult to do that with wet ground. Number two, the point I would make is if this verifies, which is a general above normal rainfall from Texas to the Carolinas and really even off into the Northeast, that could set the stage for potential big problems if we were to get two or three decaying tropical systems to come up through the south or more for that matter. We've already talked in these last couple episodes of the first alert how we are definitely anticipating higher activity in the tropics. But I mean, that's going to be something we have to be concerned about. We don't know the specifics yet, but let's just say we have a very active end of July and August 
uh, with rainfall, and then all of a sudden we start to throw tropical systems on top of that, those antecedent or pre-existing conditions of the ground, where you go, oh boy, that's going to be a problem. So Not anywhere for, for this water to go. Yeah, right, exactly. Right. So we'll keep so, a close eye on that. Yep. So let's uh, jump through this, and we do need the rain. We're still in some drought yep. conditions, yep. and we should get a new one of these. Maybe it updated while we're on air. It typically comes out uh, around 8.30 or 9 o'clock, uh, so we're maybe a few minutes early, but taking a look at the drought monitor across the U.S., um, things yeah, that's still the same pretty one. significant. So yeah, this is the one uh, from last week. So we'll yep. be getting a new one of these, but you get the point. Yeah. It's been dry across the area. We've had some good rains, uh, but not everybody's seeing it as we alluded to. So probably not going to see this change a whole lot. There will be some areas that change, um, but as far as any major changes, I don't think we've had enough rain in most of these areas. Hadn't been widespread. Yep. Yeah. So it's probably not going to deviate too much from that. So what about today? Let's jump into today. So the possibility for some scattered thunderstorms to develop during the afternoon and evening. Really the likelihood. Not, not much different than what we've had the last couple of days. Yeah. A little bit more widespread, mm -hmm. but the possibility for a few strong to severe storms is going to be there, which is why the Storm Prediction Center has highlighted us in a marginal risk. Um, you know, heavy rain, strong winds, hail, We've seen Lightning. it the last couple of yep. days. That's what we're going to be dealing with again today, but it encompasses a, a bigger area today. And re, re, you know, regardless if it's a severe thunderstorm or not, every thunderstorm has lightning. If you hear thunder, get the kids inside, get yourselves inside. You don't want to mess with this. Uh, we've had a pretty active pattern the last couple of days. Could be, in fact, I know it will be fairly active this afternoon again. Yep, let's talk about that. So our rain chances, uh, kind of hour by hour, you can see them really ramping up into the afternoon. But notice as we head toward 9, 10 o'clock, still looking at that 50 to 60 percent range. Yeah, this time of the year when you get into a pattern like this where you have a stalled front and you have a lot of moisture coming up, it can take a long time for these things to rain themselves out. So it's not uncommon, you know, when we're coming into work at two, three, four o'clock in the morning and we still track some decaying thunderstorms and then they're gone by five or six and then you just start the whole process over again. So these could linger into the evening. It's a very efficient rainmakers yep. no matter what time of day we see these storms popping up. Yep. Um, so we'll have to watch out for that. So uh, looking at model timeline from this is yesterday's data, which we think lines up a little bit better with the forecast than what we are seeing this morning which is why we're using it, but scattered thunderstorms developing into the afternoon, pushing into the I-77 corridor as we head into the evening and still lingering as we head into the late evening in overnight hours, as we just talked about. Now we'll look at some fresh data here and uh, kind of talk about this. Yeah, essentially um, rinse yeah, and let's repeat. take this full. So <laughs> yeah, but some days you'll have more coverage. Some days right. you'll have less coverage right. across the area. So we do think the coverage will be more. And we talked about this yesterday as well, that um, sometimes these models struggle a little bit. Um, particularly this time of the year when, you know, it's trying to, right now the thunderstorms haven't developed yet. Once they develop and there's something to actually track, they, team, they tend to do a much better job. So in, in theory, these will get much more precise and uh, the degree of accuracy will go up as we get closer to the event, which is, as you said, three, four, five, six o'clock this evening. So right now it has, you know, the clear indication that thunderstorms are gonna come from the west towards Charlotte yet again, just like we've seen the last couple of days. But I would venture, I would bet you a dollar that it's gonna be much more coverage than what we're seeing right there. Yeah, and even this model uh, it has been trending more and more as we go through the day. We've been looking at these runs since uh, early morning hours. So we'll be watching this closely as we go through the uh, afternoon. Rain chances going to stick around as we head through the weekend. Uh, really just going to have to be on alert for those thunderstorm chances. The good news is feel like temperature is going to dip down into the triple from the triple digits into the low to mid 90s as yeah. we go through the next several days. So and that's the actual what the highs, looks yeah, like. The actual highs will, will dip into the 80s a little bit. The lows will be very near, maybe slightly above normal, owing to the cloud cover, a blanket. And then the highs, because of that same blanket of cloud cover and that you know excellent chance, or at least a higher chance of rain, double what you would normally expect, that will keep a lid on those afternoon temperatures, upper 80s. Still humid, let's not fool ourselves, but the temperatures themselves are going to be cut back appreciably, and you'll notice it, and hopefully you'll get some rain in your neighborhood. Awesome. Thanks for joining us, Al. Appreciate yeah, the it. the first alert. Uh, we'll thanks for all of you at home. We'll see you Monday night at 9 o'clock. Yeah, for another version of this, and, of course, I'll be back tomorrow morning at about 7, 30, 8 o'clock. I'll have you another update so we can look at the weekend weather again. We'll get some new data in. So in the meantime, keep an eye to the sky and keep it on WDB-TV. Take care.